Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a scene from the uh, movie Incredibles 2, uh, a movie about a superhero family who's trying to live their lives uh, like normal, non-superhuman families. But there's a scene from, uh, from Incredibles 2 that's uh, kind of become a little bit of a running joke with my, uh, my kids. Uh, in this scene, the Incredibles are about to sit down uh, for family dinner. And the middle, uh, the middle son, Dash, is about to start digging in when his older sister, Violet, says, Did you wash your hands? And Dash gives her an annoyed look, gets up and runs to the bathroom and back again in about two seconds with his superhuman speed, and he's about to dig in again when Violet says, With soap? And again, Dash gives her an annoyed look, runs off to the bathroom and back again in about two seconds with a superhuman speed, and he's about to dig in once again when Violet asks, did you dry them? And by this point, Dash just holds up his hands in complete frustration, shakes them off in rapid speed to get the water off with a look of complete disgust and indignation on his face. And in a similar way, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes uh, had questioned Jesus about uh, his disciples washing their hands. They saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. And they asked Jesus, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Now, this isn't really a matter of uh, proper hygiene. It's not about counting for 20 seconds as we wash our hands with soap and water, uh, both inside and out, top and bottom, getting in between all the fingers as we've learned for the last year and a half. It's not about getting rid of all of the germs. It's not about uh, 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 being sanitized. It's about a ceremonial washing. It's about being fit to come into contact with the sacred, about being fit to come into the presence of God. And so these religious leaders, uh, for them it wasn't so much whether or not the disciples had been washing their hands, but it was all about them properly washing them. Were they living up and washing their hands according to the standards of the religious leaders or were they uh, being cleansed or good enough for God? And so the scribes and the Pharisees, they were concerned about external things, external matters, how things looked from the outside. And we too can fa- uh, easily fall into that same mistake. I recently saw this uh, meme coming through my Facebook field depicting a, uh, a rough and rugged looking man, tattoos all over the place, uh, sitting in between two uh, proper and prim uh, groups of Christians dressed in their Sunday best. And the Christians are looking at this guy wondering, can this guy really be a Christian? while it's the rough and rugged guy who has given his heart to Jesus. And so, too, Jesus responds to the Pharisees. He quotes from the prophet Isaiah, saying, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Now, in some ways... This is just kind of about going through the motions. Uh, That we go through the motions of getting up and going to church, putting on our Sunday best, putting on a facade of what we, how we live our lives. That we just go to church, clock in, putting in our God time for the rest of the week. Or maybe it's about being uh, parents who think that, well, we just need to go and get our uh, child baptized drop them off at Sunday school, just get them through confirmation and then we're good to go. They put on that facade of we're doing the right thing, we're doing our Christian duty, whether we're emphasizing that Christian faith at home or not. Or you might think that we're 
uh, good Christians so long as that we're being nice and kind to one another, that it doesn't really matter what we believe, just so long as we're nice. It's all about putting on that external facade to make us look good, to make us look like we're doing the right things, that we're following all those rules and regulations uh, that we have created in our own hearts. But in doing so, our hearts remain far from God because it's all about me and what I do. And this is the exact, uh, exactly the issue with the, the Pharisees. They were more concerned about looking like uh, upright and righteous people before God. It was all about how people perceived them, how they saw them from the outside. It didn't matter to them uh, about uh, what was in their heart. It was just about doing everything right by doing it the proper way according to their own standards, their own traditions had wound up replacing the Word of God. For the Pharisees, it was all about saying, look at me and look at how good I am. This doesn't mean we just throw out all of God's commands. It's not about... uh, uh, it, it, it's not that we uh, forget about what God says, for we honor God when we keep his commands. We honor God by following the Ten Commandments. We honor God when we give him our heart, our mind, our strength, our soul, and love our neighbors as ourselves. But the problem comes down when we make our own rules, make our own regulations, and make them more important than God's standards. And Jesus calls the, uh, calls the Pharisees out on this. He calls out the attitude of their hearts with this example of Corbin. Jesus says, uh, the commandment of God says, honor your father and mother, but you go ahead and say, we don't need to take care of mom and dad so long as we're giving Corbin. Now, Corbin is understood to uh, have been an offering that was giving above and beyond the 10% tithe. It was uh, an offering that was giving to God so that the Pharisees were looking at this and saying, as long as you're giving Corbin, uh, you're, you're giving it to God and so you don't need to worry about taking care of your parents. They made an excuse for themselves to not follow God's laws. And Jesus says, with other such things, you do the same thing. Because it's all about the attitude of our heart. That attitude that replaces God's word with our own word. It's as if we come along and we say, uh, we we don't need to honor the Eighth Commandment. We can uh, go out and spread whatever kind of slander and and disrespect we want to uh, the party, uh, the opposite political party, because they're idiots anyway, so it doesn't matter what we say. They're getting what they deserve. Or when we go out on the fishing boat thinking, I can worship God and honor him uh, because I'm out in his creation. I don't have to go to church. Or we listen to society's rules that say, uh, we don't, uh, you don't, uh, it, it's all right to live together before marriage because everybody's, do, uh, everybody's doing it. Or we say, it's my body. And so we make the excuse that it's okay to end the life of a child in the womb. And with other such things, we make our own rules, our own commands, our own ways that makes excuses to not follow God and his commands. And when we do that, it just places a heavy burden on people. When we follow those rules and those regulations, the Pharisees were putting rules and regulations on the, uh, on the people to live up to their standard, that standard of looking good. And it was just like Dash to his sister Violet, who became indignant and angry and annoyed with her because of that burden of the law and those rules that the Pharisees had placed on the people. 
And we do the same thing when we place that burden on people with all the rules on how to be church. But the bottom line is this. We all come before God defiled. We all come before God with unclean hands and more than just unclean hands but completely defiled bodies both inside and out because of our sin. And some of us come with a little bit more uh, filth of shame than others. We might feel that, we, that we're dirty because of the uh, things that we've done. Because we've given our bodies to somebody else, we might feel that we're covered with the dirt of shame because of our inability to deal with alcohol or drugs and we abuse them. Or maybe we can carry that shame of a divorce or some other failure in our lives. And so we don't feel worthy of coming before God, that we can't have contact with him. But Jesus lets us come before him with our dirty hands. And more than that, he lets us come before him with our dirty lives. Because he has taken his undefiled hands that were nailed to a cross, that were bloodied by the stain of his blood shed for us in an unholy death. His undefiled hands had become defiled for us as he took on and bore our sins uh, that, uh, that shed his blood on the cross that makes us clean, that washes us free of our sins, making us fit to come before a holy and righteous God by his grace through faith in him so that it's not about how we follow all the rules and do all the proper things that we make it look like we are great and wonderful on the outside. But it's by the blood of Jesus that washes us and makes us clean. And so we come, we come with dirty hands and all to be washed in the water and of the word and holy baptism. We come with our dirty hands and defiled lives to, uh, to the altar where we Uh, place into our defiled hands the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to eat and to drink, to uh, place our Savior into our mouths that forgives us of all our sins. And so it's not how we look or act on the outside, but it's on the inside through faith in Jesus that makes us clean. Amen.